with Mark Wright, I'm the Honours Coordinator for Immunology at IPC. So I'd just like to introduce to you Connor Rochford. So Connor is doing Honours in the School of uh, Public Health. If you want to really know what Honours is like, by all means talk to us academics, but if you want to really know the truth, you need to talk to a student. So Connor, tell us what it's like. All right, thanks very much and thanks for your opening remarks. So, uh, yeah, like I said, doing my honours here at the School of Public Health and Preventive Medicine. I'm doing it or being supervised by Professor Stollwinder and Ms. Renata Morello. My topic, I've really, I think you sort of mentioned you can come on and you can do a part of someone and it's really important to be achievable. I've taken on a, a sort of a bit more of a challenge to really design mine from scratch this year. So I'm looking at the sustainability of the Australian healthcare system and it's a policy perspective. So, you know, there's kind of, depending on who you talk to, everyone uh, to a certain extent understands that there's concern, concerns about the financial sustainability, but what's less well understood or perhaps recognised is do we have the policy process which is fit for purpose? So it's involved me going around and talking to key informants or stakeholders, CEOs of private health insurance groups, former health ministers, people from the health department, the media, unions, lobbies, consumer groups. So it's just been um, an incredible experience, really. I've also been fortunate enough to get some work at the school, and that's something that I really recommend for anyone who does come to the School of Public Health <coughs> Medicine, working as a research assistant on an actual real-life uh, research project, I suppose. Just gives you a different insight to doing your honours year. Um, it also covers the bills, which is good. And I've got a job teaching too, and so that's just been another phenomenal experience. Um, further to that, I spent a month in Geneva um, at the World Health Assembly, and so that was a, a steep learning curve in global diplomacy and negotiations. Um, and that's just, I guess, an example of one of the things that you can do with an honours year if you're upfront and honest about it, and sort of structure it in to your academic year and your requirements, and that's why the school's so good. So, you know, if you go and have a chat to Sharon or Jay, hey, Sharon, can I do my oral presentation a month out of date? They're like, yeah, no worries, that's fine, we can sort that out. Um, so, I think just some reflections on a B Med side in general. I think it's an amazing opportunity. You touched on it, it's an amazing opportunity to meet uh, experts and leaders in their respective fields, to contribute to science to uh, learn skills, develop connections and new knowledge, but it's an opportunity that you need to take. So you need to work hard. I think there's often sometimes a bit of a misconception that you're just gonna rock into a BMN site, it's gonna be a great year, you're gonna have an awesome time, which is all true, but you need to apply yourself. Um, and I think some of the time, I know some of my colleagues perhaps haven't applied themselves as much as they previously did the first four years or the first two years of MED, um, and then get to the end of the year, they've got a week to write 15,000 words. Um, it's just you know, a stressful situation that no one really needs. I think the second thing is, you need to be really clear about why you are taking it on this year. And so whether that's for publications to put on your CV, or whether that's publications because you want to actually contribute something, or whether you want to learn skills, new knowledge and connections, um, I think being clear about what you're trying to achieve really sets your expectations, it sets your goals, it allows you to develop a good relationship with your supervisor and your research team, and it also makes you far more productive. What I would say is don't do an honours year if you think you're going to have a year off. If you want to have a year off, just take a year off. Lots of people sort of say, oh, but I, you know, I can't do, am I going to do one or the other? There's nothing wrong with doing both. Have a year off and then do an honours year, or do an honours year and then have a year off. Um, finally, I think the supervisor is absolutely key. Um, and so I did a quick sort of pull with people before I came and spoke, and everyone I spoke to, the supervisor will make or break your year. And I remember reflecting back on to what I was doing about this time last year. It was basically speed dating. So you go around and you talk to someone and you've got like, you know, this 20 minutes where you're trying to suss them out. And it's, it's a fine balance because you're trying to impress them so that if you want to go with them, they take you. But at the same time, you're trying to work out, well, what are they like? And so it's also important to go and talk to other people. So either students that have mentored in the past or supervised, and that could be a PhD, master's student, go and talk to their colleagues and tactfully inquire what are they like with mentoring, you know, young students who know absolutely nothing about research. 
Because I think, at least for me, the best thing that you can get from a supervisor is someone who is going to give you academic guidance and support. It's also someone who's going to help you develop professionally and personally. And it's someone who's going to really invest their social capital in you and provide you with opportunities. So whether that's auditing a subject that they teach, whether it's introducing you to someone that they just think might be interesting for you to go and talk to, um, or just sitting and having a chat and talking about you know, cats on YouTube or whatever it might be, I think then that's the sign of a sign that's the sign of a good year. And if you were to pick between a dream topic and a dream supervisor, just go to supervisor every day of the week. Um, finally, just a few more tips to finish off. We've sort of heard that it is from March to October, but if you get the opportunity to start early, I would really, really encourage that. So even if it's just reading through things after your exams, doing a bit of stuff over the summer, or even coming in early, um, I think you know, that's, that's really the way to go. Challenge yourself, so be ambitious. Set big goals and really um, go after them. Ask lots of questions and be skeptical. Um, and not just of your supervisor, but it's one of the best things about being at AMREC or the school or around is that it's just a world-class institutional facility for research. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so I would need to touch on the School of Public Health and It's an awesome place to do, <laughs> awesome, awesome place to do your um, research here. So everything from the quality of supervisors and the quality of research all the way down to the little things like getting your own desk being provided with a computer. Like I, I know some of my, my mates who are actually working out of a shoebox, basically, because they're just so undersupplied and under-resourced. Whereas here, um, you're just really well looked after. You're academically supported, and the pastoral care really is um, phenomenal. And then there's the opportunity to sort of engage in professional development opportunities. So whether they're seminars during the week, you sort of rock up, it might not be your topic, but just by listening to people who are absolute leaders in their field, you'll pick up tips and tricks which you can then apply in your research project. Um, and I think that's just something that you might reflect on a little bit later. So when you're actually writing up your literature review, oh, I remember this person talking about this three or four months ago. So those experiences really are invaluable. And I'd encourage you to take them all up. If you've got any other questions, feel free to have a chat afterwards if you want to come and talk about politics or the sustainability of the Australian healthcare system, I'm always happy to take questions. Um, if you've got any ideas about how we might fix it, then come and talk to me because I want to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs>